A word for our listeners. Season 2 of Masks of Nyarlathotep is set in the 1930s and 40s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It's not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Nerds Domain gaming podcast. Join us each week as our investigators uncover the corruption of the mythos in World War II. Starring George Chimples, Rob Walker, Phil Durham, Shirley Nedswicky, and Justin Kimmett, with Matt Quiet running the table as Keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed Nazi cultists await you just beyond this music. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. I am here with Rob. I'm had muted. Oh, I'm here with Rob. I'm not muted now, having a great time. Uh, and Phil? <laughs> My ear hurts. Aww. <laughs> uh, Shirley? Hello. And I'm, of course, Matt, because I forgot to introduce myself earlier. Good job. So good You're this. on the ball. Yorp. Uh, so, uh... Aster, you have Neat. woken up. Um, you actually are inside that uh, that same wagon. It looks very familiar from that dream you just had, or oh, whatever good. that was. No. Do it has a babby? No. Uh, you do hear the whistle, the 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 humming and the singing though. Oh, good. Uh, this time you can pick out the words. It's an old like uh, kind of nursery rhyme ish song that the Romani have. It's nothing nothing big. It's just kind of something you do that you've heard others mm-hmm. hum and sing along. Um, what's your Romani at? 40. 40, okay. Um, so uh, the, a woman does turn around and says, oh, you're awake. Please don't move. Don't. Your chest is really bad, and I don't quite know what to do with it. So minimal movement is really important. Um, and she does bring, like, a bowl back over with some sort of, like, salve, but it's more of like a, like a petroleum jelly. And it has that same, like, medicinal scent, too. And she kind of, like, she looks pained by what she's about to do, but she kind of, like, l- brushes it acro- along the edge. Um, and it starts to immediately burn. Like mm. a medicinal burn, though. Like, it, it's uncomfortable, but you, you know that it's probably good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and she starts, like, spreading it around the outside. But she doesn't just make that that circle. <laughs> she kind of like spreads it one way, and then she spreads it a little bit, and she gets a little bit more. So around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys. And she says, "Guess who's back?" No, she doesn't say that. Um, and she says, uh, "What happened to your chest?" Nazis. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's technically the right answer, but that's not the answer. Um, I ran across <coughs> people that were practicing a very black magic, hmm. very dark magic. Okay. And what do you know of magic? A little. Hmm. Okay. You Would you like to keep talking about it and tell me more? A little is very vague. <laughs> well, it depends on what, if you're referencing like the magic that this world thinks it has. Very little. When you say it's black magic, how do you know that? Well, it ain't for the good of humanity. Okay. And there is magic for the good of humanity? Not that I've come across yet. <clears throat> what brought you to our camp? Um, I spent time with uh, my, my ex or my former wife was one of us, one of you, and, um, goobble gobble, goobble gobble, (laughs) goobble gobble, goobble gobble, no, she was, um, she was, because, I mean, to me, it's, yeah, 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 it's it's a a homecoming kind of event, um, just to be, like, around people that I felt the happiest around at the time, sure, um, 
and you so I mean, so I intentionally like said that, then corrected myself. I mean, it was I accidentally said it, but then I intentionally corrected like one of one of your people. Yeah. Um, so I spent quite a bit of time here, and I knew of anyone that would understand and be able to help me. You were the most likely people. I see. And where did you uh, experience this black magic? This was in London. Ooh, you're gonna roll over persuasion. This was in London, wasn't it? No, the hell. Well, wasn't that where the party was? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's nah, huh? I'll let you say that was this was in England because that wasn't quite in London. It's well right. outside of London. We're on the same page though. Okay. Um, how long ago was that? <laughs> was that how how long ago was that? How long ago was that, Matt? I, I forget. A couple weeks. <laughs> a couple weeks. I think I don't remember. Maybe listeners at home, if our timetable is off, we apologize. It's all Rob's fault. A month ago. It's always Rob's fault. Um. Somewhere between a week and a month. I, it's hard to keep track of time with everything that's been going on. Let's see. Something between one second and an infinity. Um, she puts the the little uh, bowl down and wipes her hands um, on her apron, and then she turns back around, and you can see she has some sort of, like, gas stove. Mm-hmm. Like, or, yeah, gas stove that she's been, that she has something on. She pours uh, whatever's in the pan into a bowl. She come, turns back around, and <coughs> she grabs the back of your head. There's no question here. She's not asking you anything, and you don't feel like you could stop her. At this point, you... Right. Um, to say you're weak would be an understatement. And she lifts your head up to a position where she can put the bowl to your lips, and before, you know, she puts the bowl at your lips, and before she even says anything to you, starts pouring in the, this liquid, and then starts saying, oh, drink, drink. Um, it's warm. It's not hot. Okay. Um, it's some sort of broth. There's nothing else but liquid in it. Um, spice the, the way you would expect like a, a broth for someone that's sick to have. Mm-hmm. Um, so very mildly spiced, but you can definitely taste like the beef under base mm-hmm. um, or undertones. Um, and she makes you drink it all of it. Like you let you breathe a little bit here and there, but doesn't stop until you've take, taken in all of the broth. And then she puts the bowl back down, um, lowers your head back down, and says, I'm not sure what to do with you. Um, I would need to know more about what it was that did this, if you have that information, before I could be sure of what to do to fix this. But you're in a bad way. Are you the wise woman of the trib, of the group? Yes. Come back with the eldering yourself, just the two of you, and we'll talk about it more in detail. Okay. Um, my daughter will be here watching over you. For I assume she's bit. in training. Yeah. Okay. Um, If you think that um, you're going to do anything foolish, she is not as kind as I am, nor does she have my patience. I try to raise my arm and I'm going to yeah, fall. Right, right, right. right. Then, like, yeah. what, what, what can I do? Well, not everyone understands our ways. And not everyone is um, right enough to realize when they're not in a good place. So, I do. I'll be back. As she's walking out the door, mm-hmm. I'll reference... What my group was. What, the, what, the, that's vague, Rob. You're losing me. The, the, the Romani group that we had come okay. from. So that's you're, are you going to name the, I don't think it's a tribe, but the, are you going to name the, the, the yeah. specific? I'll just, I'll say, I'll, I'll tell uh, her this is where I, this is where so I was So like, from. She, she's like, uh, I'll be back. And she grabs like the door handle and turns and starts to go out. And you're like, I'm from, mm-hmm. you should really name that. You should write something down. Do that now. Let me go. Let me research it. I'll, sure, I'll figure it out. Sure, sure. Um, she, Dead stops, opens the door the rest of the way, and looks at her daughter and points. And her daughter gets up and leaves, and she shuts the door. They're, they're dead. I haven't made it out. And she goes back over to where the pan was, and she uh, picks up a rather large cutting knife. And she sits down on a stool in front of you with the knife kind of just across her na- her lap, 
clearly in her hand. What do you mean you were with them? I name the elder. Which is another name you should be writing down. I'll figure it no, out. No, no, I'm just letting you know. Let me, let me, hold, let me. Think, make things you need to know is the, yes. the elder and the wise woman, and did we did name your wife, right? I which you should have written down. <laughs> don't have that. That's all right. Something down. else you should write down. We might soon. have to listen at that. Um, So, how do you, how, what do you mean you were with them? I was my wife. I was living with them. Okay. They're dead. All but me, as how, far as I know. How did that happen? They thought I was dead. Who did? The Nazis. They cleared us out. Um, she kind of lifts the knife off of her, um, off of her lap, and places it like all, all between your arm and your chest, not hard, just like lightly, and then puts her hand right in her po- in your pocket and starts pulling and anything out. Like she has left everything in in your pockets. She reaches behind you and gets your wallet, anything that's that's there. She pats you down for. Mm-hmm. And starts going through it in a very unorganized way. Just like she pulls out, you know, a receipt, tosses it on the ground if it's not what she needs. And just like starts going through things one at a time while holding the knife kind of on you. Um, And then she pulls out, I assume you would have some sort of personal effect. Mm -hmm. What would that be? It would probably be... Something from the marriage that would have been... Like a locket with your wife's picture in it, or... Mm, I don't think we would have had anything like that. Um, uh, an embroidered piece of cloth or something? Yeah, you could probably have, like, her handkerchief. A marriage handkerchief or marriage something or other. Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, whatever it, I'm looking for. Because they do hand fasting. It wouldn't have been... I have no idea what the Romani do. Zero. Marriage ceremony, per se. This would be something that somebody playing the Romani would have researched. Saying. Well, I didn't realize it was going to come up. Hey. Yet. <laughs> know your backstory. Yeah. I, that wasn't the part of the backstory I figured I was going to play on to yet. Anyways. Um, so you, she finds something appropriate. We'll, we'll name it later. It's not that big of a deal. Right. Um, when she finds it, she kind of uh, lays it across your stomach, away from the hole in your chest. Places the knife back. You you watched the Nazis kill them. You know it wasn't the Nazis. Kill? I watched them rape and maim my wife. Okay. Are any of them still alive? If they are, they won't be for long. Okay. Well, I'll be back with the Elder. Thank you. She stands and opens the door and leaves. Her daughter does not come back in. And it's from the best. Well, you know what? Uh, as after she leaves, there's a little bit of time that goes by, and you are pretty sure you fell asleep because when the door opens back up, which startles you awake, it is darker outside. It's not necessarily twilight or anything, but the sun has definitely changed its position enough that a good amount of time has passed. Um, and uh, the the man that you met when you when you arrived. Um, is there, and he comes in. Um, he's not. He's older, but he is definitely not like a feeble, elderly man. He's he's strapping Romani man. He comes in and sits, and she comes in and sits and shuts the door, and he says, "So, what is it that you have to tell us?" The woman who assaulted me and who attacked me is working for those that are trying to kill us. Us? I'm Who's us? By us, I mean us. And I run my finger circular around the room. Well, you try to. Well, <laughs> the best I can. Yep. Indicating that not just myself, but 
the Romani. I said it, it, the, no tribe right, is right. no no group is safe. No tribe is safe. However you want to call it. Um, <coughs> they will rampage you like they rampaged me, and my goal is to eliminate every damn one of them. We'll just stay away from the border of Germany. They're not sticking to Germany. They're gonna move. Trust me, I'm in a position to know this. Yes, I can tell from your the information we pulled out, or that she that uh, she's pulled out. Um, what exactly is it that you wish from us? I just need to heal to get back in the fight. And then, are you prepared for that healing to hurt? I didn't expect it to not. <laughs> are you here in France by yourself? I had a group with me, but they're all over. I don't know where they're at now. Will they be looking for you? I'm hoping not. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Okay. I told them I was seeking safety, and that's what I was going for right now. Yeah, my my kind of immediate goal was self-preservation. Okay. We can get something... We can begin preparations for cleansing. I don't know how much it's going to work. I mean, this is... There's something going on with this that's not of our world. Uh, I don't disagree. No, you don't know. All the folklore and all the stories I've heard doesn't explain this. That's because you are not one of us. Oh, well, that's fair. There are darker, uglier things out there than uh, than the Christian devil and Kali. We'll begin our preparations. I don't know that this will do anything helpful. If it doesn't, our next course of action would likely be to kill you. Then let's hope it works. Okay. Th this isn't just some corruption. There is something inside of you. Oh, I know. I've seen it. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to leave you alone. Don't... If you feel your strength come back, don't feel like you should leave this wagon. Where would I go? To come out to the fire, even. Mm -mm. That... That is unsafe for you, for you right now. Um, the elder kind of stands up and goes to the door and um, lets himself out. And the, the woman looks at you again and kind of like retucks your blanket and stands up and leaves as well. And you sit there in the like as they close, you've got a candle in, in there with you, but it's getting darker and you're feeling drained, and uh, you kind of fall asleep again. Um, Brian and Evelyn, mm -hmm. what are you guys doing? Can I, as a player, um, make sure I have a couple things clear? Sure. Um, because it was last session. Um, uh, Rob... Did you s explicitly, did your character explicitly tell my character, did Astra tell Brian not to look out for him later? I don't remember, Brian. No, you didn't. You said, I'm going to go seek help. You were a little freaked out. Yeah, I'm not moment. sure what. Okay, because that, that didn't sound right to me either. Until well, no, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm hoping you're not searching me down. That, that's fair. I just wanted to make sure, like, if you had explicitly said so, I probably would have had more questions at the time, but I also... Didn't want that to be like, oh, well, you told me that, so that would change my actions now. But if you didn't tell me that, then... Right. I mean, ultimately, my... I mean, now we're getting into metagaming. Sure, but, yeah, right, yeah. But, you know, ultimately, my, my... I would think that if my character ran off and the place you heard I went was to a gypsy camp or a Romani camp, your first impulse is not to rush into a Romani camp to try to find me. I mean, ideally, that would be like... I don't think that would be very not not helpful. first, but but I, 
I am going to like eventually try to reach out and make contact with you. I'm not just going to be like, well, I hope you did okay. Good yes, luck but, to you. But contact, contacting, <laughs> contacting versus bringing a freaking armada of people to. No, yeah, <laughs> right, right. Okay. Uh, what's your Brian? What's your theology? Uh, Top uh, right. Yeah, there we go. Fifty. Okay, can you roll theology for me? Sure. Forty-six. Uh, the Romani are a varied, have a very varied belief system. Mm-hmm. Some of them have adopted Christianity. Some have adopted um, Hinduism, Muslim, different Orthodox Hindu, like, religions. So, so saying they're gypsy doesn't mean that they're one particular belief structure. Right. Okay. However, the ones in France are not looked well upon by the church. Okay. And uh, listeners at home, I don't know if that's historically accurate, but whatever. Nobody <laughs> likes nobody in the time liked gypsies. Period. So, based if on frickin', if uh, Inglorious Bastards can rewrite history, so can we. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I like to think that I'm as good as Quentin Tarantino at writing dialogue. I don't know if you what? are. Based on my role with the church and and also that type of theology, are there groups of gypsies which are? Uh, practicing occultish beliefs? Yes. I think I'm just making up a word. <laughs> yes. There are some that pr- practice cultish, occult beliefs, or occult beliefs. There we go. That's the words. Um, there are also those that are Christian that keep older ways. So okay. they're, not a, they're not like a unifying danger. Right. But an individual camp could have problematic elements. Okay. And the church here doesn't think that they're all a bunch of thieves, like is just generally the sense, but they're not known for the best of people either. Right. So they have a very solid, unsavory belief, uh, uh, reputation. That's In general, they yeah. normally okay. don't have a good reputation in yeah. most places they visit. And so then the second thing that we um, discuss is kind of between episodes is that um, Blake would have. Um, after sec- um, previously, after securing um, care for Carlos at the hospital, would have inquired if a character matching Aster was there. Right. Having heard not that, he then asked Francois uh, about him, and then yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I assume that you would have looked, checked the hospital. I mean, you're going to be at the hospital. It takes like two minutes to check. That's right. fine. That's yeah. But for the listeners, the same. Yeah, way. absolutely. I didn't just automatically assume mm-hmm. he's not at this hospital. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. as a player, I'm well aware he's not. Yeah. Um, anyways, okay, so we're picking up um, at the same day that she was released from jail? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, no, because you guys probably ate and checked your stuff. Yeah. And then probably right. went back, went to bed, because you're like, uh, Evelyn, you may have rested, but you were in jail. It's right. not exactly a resting, resting situation. <laughs> Um, so probably Restful. this would be the third day after the the events, the shootout. Okay. <laughs> um, the the other thing to keep in mind is um, a, if Aster's body was causing that much of a problem, how straightforward was his thought process? Yeah, I mean, like I definitely have a drive to locate him and make sure that he is okay. Blake speaking to Evelyn. Um, my my contact mentioned that you might have a court date and it would be important for you to be there. Um, were you given a court date? The paperwork you have has a court date in like February. You got some time. What? It's December. It? It's December. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and she pulls the paperwork out and shows you because it's like whoop de doo dot a. I kind of. That's French. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. We. Well, it we, says we. <laughs> that I have a court date. In in, in February, but I'll probably just be sending a lawyer. Uh, that would be close enough. That would sending a lawyer would do the okay. thing it needs to do. Please make sure to attend to it. We've certainly um, had to call upon some favors to make this go as oh, well as it has. Take care of it. Okay. My mother and father will take care of it. Very well. Um, but I was asked to leave uh, Morocco. I was in Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I? France. No. Ma, 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 ma. Well, you were oh, asked not we to go. We're in Nice. We're in Nice. We were in France. You were asked 
not to go, go back to, to Monaco, 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 but then also to I just shortly leave. leave. I just wanted yeah, to say Monte Carlo, and that was not right. <laughs> um, Monaco, good night. Um, I've been asked to leave um, as soon as possible. So, <laughs> that being said, <laughs> you weren't <laughs> you weren't asked so much as it was highly suggested. So, you can play it however you want. Just as a reminder, you were it was suggested. I shouldn't get into any shenanigans. Certainly, certainly, we don't need any more attention. Um, I would suggest. Um, Shall I stay in my room and read? <laughs> Um, that, or you can accompany me on various tasks and we'll keep our heads down for the time being. Um, or if you feel it good to return to England, um, to not, you know, raise concerns with the local constabulary, <coughs> then I would... Would would us being seen together not draw undue attention? Um... I'm not sure what elements were are here that that is I didn't visit you in jail because Correct. until until that was resolved I certainly did not want to entangle myself. Yes. Now that I think that we're relatively clear of that I'm not sure that there are any people here that knowing that we're associating is going to be a problem since as long as we stay on the up and up then we should not have any further issues. Um, and anybody that would know more of our dealings already knows that we're associating, is my impression. But if, if I'm missing something, please do enlighten me. I just don't want to bring any unnecessary, because of what happened, um, any unnecessary if anything, um, trouble to the group. Yeah. If anything not on the up and up needs to be done, then yes, I think I should go solo until any more of our party members are ready to. Join in. Um, I think that we should probably go visit uh, the hospital. Yes. Uh, Carlos is not likely to be conscious yet, but he, we were asked, or I was asked to check him daily. Okay. And then perhaps we can um, see if we can ask them to check other hospitals um, in the area to see if Aster is there. If we don't get any other leads, then maybe we can follow up on um, this Romani camp lead. And h how again did you get separated from him? Um, he felt that if he did not leave in the middle of the night, he would be dead anyways. And I was not in a position to stop him as Carlos was quite clearly uh, in a more dangerous health space. And he's a grown fill-in-the-blank man. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that word is allowed on that podcast. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What word? Fill-in-the-blank. Fill-in-the-blank. A word. grown fill-in-the-blank man. So, <laughs> yes, let's go ahead no. and, uh. um, uh. Uh, let's go ahead and visit Carlos. Okay. Um, so you go to the hospital. Carlos is still unconscious. Uh, Are we able to see him? Yeah, yeah. You definitely go into the room. Um, he is very pale. Does he have a private room? No. Uh, <laughs> can I arrange for him to have a private room? That's, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. And <laughs> maybe up his, you know, make sure that somebody's checking on him. Okay. Turning him more frequently so he doesn't get that. I, no, right. uh, I've decided the French speak like a Minnesotan, a Minnesotan <laughs> English. No. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can speak I mean, can French. I mean, can Canadians are French, right? Sure. Yeah, um, yeah sure. Well. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. How did they get that accent? <laughs> Sorry, yes. sorry. You, yeah, you definitely can take uh, get a private room. Sorry. <laughs> no, For you all our Canadian listeners, <laughs> <yeah, laughs> right? Uh, you definitely sorry. can get uh, a okay. uh, private room for him. Not a problem. Okay. All Germans are Russian. All French are Canadian. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Because <laughs> you know people really turn in for our authenticness. Right. And all authenticity. There you go. All Italians sound like Brad Pitt. <laughs> Buongiorno. <laughs> Buongiorno. Gorlame. All of our Italians. Yeah. Oh he speaks third cringe. most of that. Every Italian. single time. <laughs> Sorry, I don't speak any. That's <laughs> what I said. You speak third most. <laughs> uh, that makes third most. I love that movie. Anyway, let's go. 
so the other hospitals report they they check the other hospitals. There's no one matching that description that's come in with anything, um, especially not a foreigner. Like or no no French. He's French. Yeah, he's French. Yeah, no nobody nobody has come in with any kind of that matches that description with a chest, chest wound. Uh, <laughs> yes, with a chest, chest wound impairment. Yeah, yeah a chest impairment. Right. Chest impairment. So speaking to to Emily, a chest baby. What what do you know of the um, Romani? Uh, roll your folklore. Let's go with that. <laughs> oh, let's let's do this back at the hotel. Can I roll my not, history? Not so nope. You can roll your folklore. Natural history? Ooh, not even that. Hmm. I um, think you should roll your folklore. I have a five. That's fine. <laughs> it just means you don't know much. Eighty-nine. Okay. Let's relax. Uh, you know <clears throat> that the gypsy people as you would know them, because Romani is probably a thing they call themselves, but whatever. Mm-hmm. You're American. You don't care. Um, they, uh, they are a transient people. They typically don't conform to the cultures they're in, and they're thieves. That's what you know. Okay. Um, so I, I know that they... You know, are very individual. Their, their groups are very individualized. Um, so while oftentimes they're referred to as singular, as you know, gypsies or, or Romani, that um, their beliefs can can vary quite a bit. Um, they can not be the um, best of folk to mm. associate and deal with. Can I roll an idea? Keep going. Sorry. Um, yes. So. Um, you would know if we want an, to f- you would know that there's an underlying folklore that they all believe though in, in magic and spells and cures and remedies that come from the supernatural yeah they're they're they all fo- follow a more herbalistic medicinal medicine way than mm. medicinal some no what, what i'm saying is they like they don't turn to hospitals every time right they're not like scientologists where they're like oh hospitals that's bad not scientology christian scientists it's close. <laughs> it's really bad when so many crazy people use Scientology, <laughs> science. Um, they're Which not like has a, nothing to do with science whatsoever. They're they're not like Christian scienti- scientists. Yeah, that um, that eschew hospitals, but like they'll do home remedies, and nine times out of ten, they'll they'll cure a lot of stuff, or they'll at least treat it. But you know, somebody breaks a bone and you can't set it, and it looks bad. You just take them to the hospital. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. I think that we need to follow up on our lead there um, and perhaps trying to get a message if we can find wherever this particular one is. And I can get in contact with the person who gave me the vague information that I have thus far. And um, could we also check as to why he would seek these people out? It seems strange to me. Um. I would put that question to him when we reunite with him. I don't want to put out... So the, the, the man that I'm working with hmm. is is aware that we are working... Presumably is w- aware that we're working with the, the, the British government and are here. Um, he's not from the room. British government? He's, he's Well, he's a French... He spoke... He seems like a Frenchman to me. I, I didn't get into too many details because I didn't want to get into too many details. But more importantly... What I don't think is that he has any idea as to the uh, occult nature of the type of work that we do. And so I don't want to put out and ask too many questions of these types of people. Um, Oh, I was just, I was wanting some more background on Aster because it's obviously, there is something that we don't know about this man. If you wanted to call MI6. Section D. Section D, D, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) If you want to call Section D... And try to get that information that way. What I don't want to do is ask the French government to look into their own man. Our, yeah, their their own man, because who knows if we can trust what information they're going to give us about their own man, um, or what you know why we're questioning any of that. I think that that should be in house and put it to him or to our own people. Yeah, then I would go. Ma- I would make that call at some time okay. because I want to know why he kept the kept this from us and why but he sought them out and why he's not here at the hospital. I mean, if it's good enough for Carlos, then... 
Well, to be to be clear, we uh, my character is not yet convinced that Astra's at the Romani camp. That's true. And I've been if I've if my character's oh, I guess n- I'm just taking it at face value. Yeah, I've I've been trying to say that that's the lead that we have as to where he might be. Mm-hmm. And I've been I've been trying to have my character communicate that to your character. If you're just He's there and convinced, and that's fine. You can play your character. <laughs> Obviously, well, you can play your character however you want. English, so. Yeah, yeah. No, it's clear that Brian doesn't know where he's at, but this is the best. That's lead. the, the lead o- that and he only has. at this point, only lead that he has. Then trying to find out. Well, no, I would still want to know more about Astro's background because he wasn't very forthcoming. So I would okay. still put that out. Um, so you call section D. Yes. Um, you speak with, we'll just say Weld again, because he's a good contact. Mm. So, uh, Evelyn, what, uh, what, what are you looking for? Uh, we seem to have some, um, news about Aster, and he wasn't very forthcoming about <coughs> his involvement or his background. Uh, I would just like someone to do a little digging and research and find out more about his background. And I have his file here. Do you, do you say Aster over this line? <laughs> yeah. Um, do you say? Do I say? You just said he have, I have his file. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't oh, say. Did I, I say don't. Aster? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Do you want to say our, our, friend, our friend? Our friend? <laughs> or do you want to say Aster? Yeah. Whenever you want to say Aster. The baguette. Oh, so we're calling him a baguette now. That's fine. I like it. <laughs> our little froggy or something? I mean, come on. Nope, you're I a baguette would, now. <laughs> I wouldn't use derogatory terms. You called me a baguette. Oh, bimbo. It's, it's a piece of bread. It's it's a, it's a long, good, thick, crunchy <laughs> piece of bread. Yeah, seriously, dude. Like of all the things she could have called you, baguette is actually pretty complex. I would like Some? to know the <laughs> recipe of the baguette <laughs> that we had. I like it. I like it. Sorry, that's too good. You're a baguette now. <laughs> Damn it. Um, I have the baguette's recipe in front of me. Um, a lot of it is redacted. Hmm. Um, what we have is his prior service record. We do not have why he was released from service. We don't have much information on his time afterwards, but that he was willing to return to service and accept it because of his experience. Any personal previous records before that? Not really. Uh, well, I take the, the, some basic records, but they're not. You know, top of his class here, top of his class there, nothing. Family, friends, anyone hurt in the war by the Nazi? Oh, by the... Krauts? Schnitzel. The Huns? <laughs> the Schnitzels. Um, <laughs> I don't know that it would necessarily be that much of a problem to just yeah, call say Nazis. Nazis. Like, um, but calling out a specific team member's name was a little he, <laughs> he spent some time in Germany... Well, technically France at the time, but now Germany again in the Rhineland. Um, and his family, it seems, was lost there during some rioting is what I have here. I don't know that I trust it, but that seems... Lost, I don't know lost that I... Lost as in... Lost dead. No. Oh. I don't know that I would trust the details necessarily, but the overall... Picture it's painting seems reliable. <clears throat> Don't look at how the sausage is made. Just right. It's a sausage. It's just a sausage. Well, I feel like. I'm sorry. I'm not actually playing. No, no, no. That's <laughs> no, no, no. no I, I like the. Okay. It just seems a little concerning that. Um, He's intelligence. They don't tell everybody everything. Mm. Remember, you, you're dealing right now, your team consists of a freedom fighter who lost, um, a soldier, you. A debutante. <laughs> and an actual intelligence agent. Only one of you is doing the job you were trained to do. That's me. <laughs> don't, look, don't look at me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> though, though sometimes I'm doing the job I'm paid to do. I call it true, people. True, true, true. <laughs> true. So his his lack of forthcoming with information that just may be his his training in play in in position. 
But could that not be, um, then could that not ruin the bread at the end? <laughs> I, would, I would speak with your baguette personally and find out what's going on. That's assuming that we find the fresh loaf. Is he currently missing? <laughs> I assume you didn't pass that information along. Just that you needed help. Okay. Is he currently missing? Uh, yes. Have you not heard? Heard what? That he's missing? No. No, that had not been passed along. Uh, and that he, instead of seeking traditional medical help, he sought out... Um, may have. You want to use the word may, may have. May have sought out... Uh, would I say a Romani encampment? Sure. Okay. No, you probably say gypsy encampment. You gypsy really encampment. are not that politically correct. <laughs> the world doesn't go political Those correct until gypsies. about 10 years ago. Um... Follow up on any leads you have. If you that need assistance, let me know. But I That was my concern. I can't speak to what he may or may not be doing. He's too far away. Okay. Okay. Then we'll follow up leads on this end and let you know. Okay. Click. Oh, he hangs up first. <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't. I do. No. Anywho. So when you return, or I don't know, made it from the room, um, but um, would you like to um, come with me uh, to see if we can get a little more assistance? Yes. Okay. Um, then we're having Italian for lunch. So you go down and ask the the bellhop. Yeah. Um, he directs you to an Italian restaurant a block or two from where you're at. Um, about 20 minutes later, Francois enters, sits down at the table, pulls out his... He <laughs> actually, no, you guys are at a nice restaurant. He doesn't have a newspaper. He just sits down. He seems to greet you very pleasantly in French, you think? <laughs> you can tell he's greeting you presently right. as though you're old friends. Right, and I, I'm like, oh, bonjour, mon ami, and I kiss both of his cheeks. And, and says, and oh, Thomas, it's good to see you. Um, uh... He calls you something French. I can't think of any names. Yvette. What now? Yvette. 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 Uh, it's so great to see you. It's nice to have you to have come down from Paris. I'm so happy that you had a chance to visit. Um, and then he kind of like quiets down. Like he's not loud, but he's speaking loud enough that other people can hear. Mm -hmm. um, and then he kind of settles into more of a uh, intimate conversational tone. He says, um, what can I do for you, Mr. Thomas? Um, I translate. Well, no, no, he, he speaks in that. English. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could I, I? I hate to impose again, but could you um, give us the location of the group that you heard the rumor about? Yes. Um, he tells you kind of where it's at and how to get there. Um, would you be in the need of a car? Uh, yeah. Can I mean... You're going to ask for the car that got impounded when you were driving it through? No. Okay. No. <laughs> and tell me if this is metagaming. I mean, wouldn't we know that this is a seclusive group? Yeah. Wouldn't we want to find somebody that would be able to go to the group and find out? Yeah. I, uh, so the best place to find um, someone to go to the gypsy group would be in the gypsy group. Well, don't we have spies? Well, yeah, I, I I agree that we probably want to see if we can find an emissary. Yes. Um. But all so far, all he's asked is if we need a car, and I'm sure we could use a car. We're, yes. we're not committing to going there. We're not, <laughs> we're not going there, are we? I don't think so. Unless like unless we can't find anybody that <laughs> let's 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 about going. focus back on the conversation you're currently in. That is the conversation. So you're talking about this in front of him on whether or not on you're who? going. Francois is sitting at the table. If he's giving us a car to go, why wouldn't I talk about it to him? Okay. But because what our plans are. <laughs> doesn't Francois know that they're insular? Yeah. You guys are spying so good. <laughs> that there was a blur of in and out of character there. 
that I was lost on where oh. it started being in character and when it was out of character. So I would rather we all stay in character. That's so I why I asked if it was metagaming if we knew that there were an insular group. Right, and then you started telling me that everything you were saying was in character. You didn't stop talking. You just Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Those, those are details that I think we can certainly determine. But I don't want to hold um, our good friend uh, Francois' time. Okay. I can provide a car. She looks clearly confused. Like, I can provide a car, assuming you don't uh, drive it through any international checkpoints without stopping. <laughs> I'll drive the car. Then she looks very embarrassed and <laughs> tilts her head down and just sips her tea. Um. Yes. Uh, was there anything else? Um. Do you have any contacts? whom you wouldn't be concerned with um, us sending a message into this group? I don't have any... Mm, I could send a message into the group, but I don't know how useful that would be. Um, I ha We have very little interaction with the that particular group because they don't wish for the interaction. So anything that I get is going to be forced at best. It may be best if your friend is with them that you show up in friendship, and that may get you farther than a third party being involved. I appreciate your insight. So... Can I roll? I do. Sure. Uh, well, I guess I'll just ask you. The GM Shirley's asking this. Um, Is she? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I guess my question is, well, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, um, the answer is yes. I don't know what the question was. What was the question? <laughs> she didn't get it out. The question wasn't a question. I'm going to ask Talk. Evelyn's going to talk to Brian after Francois leaves. Is that everything? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, we are in your debt. To keep this from looking odd, I will have uh, the meal with you. I oh. apologize yeah. for the inconvenience, but... Hmm. No, that's best. And at this point, they, see, they they've, you all probably ordered and ordered wine. He's ordered a bottle of wine. Um, it's all brought out. You eat, I don't know, spaghetti. It's Italian. <laughs> Whoa. Um, <laughs> Actually, you drink a bottle. Of, yeah, you drink the bottle of wine. It's a very nice vintage. Um, and then he gets up shortly after, before coffee is brought out. Thanks you both for meeting with or seeing him, and tells you to stop by the house anytime, and he'd be happy to see you again. And leaves, and also leaves you guys with the check. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. Um, well, hopefully, not a problem. <laughs> so coffee's brought out. They bring you um, like tiramisu. Um, small pieces of tiramisu and uh, leave you with a chance to eat that. Well, and I say small pieces because we in America believe that our, our desserts should be as giant as the Eiffel Tower, mm -hmm. when in fact they should be like a quarter of that size. That's an appropriate size dessert. Um, <clears throat> so my I concern about um, being able to visit or see or get to Aster is that the culture of the people. Correct. Being very insular. Yes. And um, do we know, and we don't really know anything about Aster's background or his family. And I was thinking I could be a distant relative seeking him if that could possibly get us into the scene of like a niece. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, you tell me what you guys are doing. Don't just look at me and say, if, okay. If pressed. I think that we can begin by saying that we were traveling with him. Mm -hmm. And if they press our connection, um, then perhaps I am your um, escort. Oh, oh, oh. And he is um, your uncle. Does okay. that work? Yes. I feel like that is good. 
They just relegated you to being her crazy uncle. <laughs> Me? <laughs> her other. Yeah. My her other, other crazy, crazy uncle. uncle. <laughs> okay. Um, will be the first time. So you guys head out there? Does he already have the location? Cause, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, knew, he knew where it was, yeah. Okay. Um, he gave you that location, then how to get there. And then the car shows up at the hotel later or something? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you guys probably had lunch, I would say, more than likely th- for that meal. Yeah. Um, that was my guess, yeah. And then you guys head out that way with the car? Um, yes. Um, I am... So, I, I'm still armed, yes? Yeah. I don't see any reason at any point. Um, did you have any backup? Um, they didn't weapon... Well, Oh, yeah, she would have had backup something in the trunks. Or, or did they give her back her weapon from whatever yeah, they, they took from the car? Yeah, but they impounded the car. Oh, that's right. We don't have that car anymore. Yeah, so but I'm saying your trunks that, that were at the, the other hotel. Oh. Trunks, trunks being boxes that, that you carry around trunk. from when moving from place to place, not in the car. So, question, because I feel like this is a plot hole. They would have impounded the car, but they when they looked in the trunk and saw all the m- artillery. What artillery in the trunk? I thought we threw all of our stuff in the trunk. You're remembering the party. When you guys put all that in there. Fine. You guys, like, they literally went in and confronted these guys with guns. That was the artillery you had. Okay, that's fine. We took everything out and used it. Got it. And when we left you in the car, we took her gun with us? Um, Yeah, that would have made sense. Yeah. Because her getting arrested with a gun might have caused a lot more problems. Right. Okay. Yep, so you guys are both armed. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that we... Unless you have anything of particular value, then I think we can leave all that at the hotel. Um, while I think that we should carry, discreetly carry our arms with us, mm-hmm. um, when we arrive, um, you know, if pressed, I think that we should acknowledge that we have them. We will clearly be outgunned and outmanned, and so we don't want to get into a firefight with them. So yes. if they ask us to surrender anything, I think we should surrender it. Yes. Okay. Agreed. Okay. So you drive the 40 minutes or so. During the daylight, out to the camp. <laughs> um, when you pull up at the camp, there's not a lot of places to park that are like. I mean, it's not like it's at a parking lot. Mm-hmm. You just kind of pull off of the main little dirt road um, and step out. And there are five or six boys, men, young young men, that kind of approach you um, with some dogs, like not the attack dogs, but like. It's clear that they're just like the 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 the, the wagon hounds, like they're just kind of hanging out, and they're definite mutts. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of them starts speaking very quickly in French, and it is a very strangely accented French. And you're like uh, Evelyn, even you are having some real trouble like right, following what I he's only saying. Know proper French. Yeah. Um, and as you kind of both stand there and. Like motion that you don't know. I'm like, bonjour, and then I tell, <laughs> I ask him to slow down and. French. Yeah, and, uh, uh, an older man kind of uh, walks up, and uh, he says, uh, in English, he says, uh, "You are here for what?" We have <coughs> reason to believe that a friend of ours um, may have uh, sought out this group. And we're looking for him because we um, does he fear for his well-being. Ha- yeah, have a care for him. Does he have a name? <coughs> uh, I guess I don't know any. Re- like we weren't traveling under pseudonyms no, at you the aren't. time, so um, Aster. And do you have names? My name is um, <coughs> Brian Blake. I would go ahead and say Evelyn. Evelyn. Last name? Uh, why didn't you ask his last name? He gave it. I gave it. I oh. Brian Blake. <laughs> Brian Blake. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, my name is Brian Blake. And you're like, Evelyn. Like, share. <laughs> You'll learn about her in about 40 years. <laughs> so if it was Aster's sister, she would have taken on a different name. Kind of gambling here. 
Make a decision because he's starting to look at you really weird because you're not giving a last name. No, this is all out of character waiting. This has nothing to do with in character waiting. What's Astro's last name? Do we know Astro's last name? Yes, you do. What is it? <laughs> so I would Fournier? give Evelyn, but I would give Astro's last name, hoping that he would Evelyn get it. Astor's last name. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn Fournier. Astor's last name. She Fournier. had a lot of wine at once. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, Fournier. Okay. Um, okay. And you think he's here in the camp? We have reason to believe so, that he might have um, sought out help here. Why? His he had an injury. There are hospitals. Why here? <coughs> it's an injury that hospitals may uh, not be equipped to uh, assist him with. But I, as to why he chose here versus a hospital, we don't know because he... he left without um, telling us where he was going. Um, one of the wagons, the door opens, and um, two young men, not the ones that you first met, um, are like, not firemen, that's over the shoulder, are like, th have Aster draped between them and are bringing him out. Um, and there is a fire kind of in the center of the, the wagons, and they kind of lay him on... Um, like pillows kind of next to it. Um, and he says, uh, the, the older gentleman says, are you prepared for what comes next? We're I would ask what comes next. My response mm. would be, um, I'm here to support him. Good. Mr. Blake, you can go sit next to your friend, Miss Fournier. Are you prepared for what comes next? I would say the same thing. I would follow Blake's lead. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so you both go and sit next to the body. Aster, you have been jostled out of bed, but you don't. Your head is swimming, and nothing is really making sense. You're mm -hmm. aware that you're awake, but everything's moving on its own. Mm. And it doesn't make sense that you're being moved. It's just like the world itself is moving, and it does like you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I can't think of what movie it is that where you're getting a picture of their face or you're a video of their face, but everything's moving around them, and they're just very out of it. Mm. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, um, you're you are suddenly looking up at like a twilight sky, and you can see the stars. Um, and then you feel a sharp pain um, like uh, next to your uh, um, on your cheek next to your left eye um, so the uh, woman um, comes out dressed in appropriate Romani garb um, takes out a small knife and places it next to Aster's left eye and then slices down not a deep cut but enough that it brings blood out um, and then she kind of leans down over the over Aster's chest. Aster is stripped from the waist up. He is wearing some sort of pants. They're not the pants he was wearing earlier. Um, and she um, flicks the blood on the on his chest. And uh, um, Evelyn, you and Blake both see that when the blood hits the chest, the chest pushes out probably a good six inches, like three points almost in a triangle pushing out. Um, it's very disconcerting, so you'll both need to roll sanity. But I have a cult. <laughs> <laughs> I have Cthulhu missiles. Yes, you know what? You should roll that so you can understand better what, what terrible, terrible thing is about to happen. Oh, that bad. Um, you're gonna both going to... or Did you pass, Shirley? Yes, 71. You both are going to lose, lose one. 79. Lose just, one. <laughs> okay. Do I get any of this back? No. We're supposed to go insane in this game. That's that's part of the game, Shirley. Fine. Um, Is there a well around here? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Y your character's just going to die because she's going to kill everybody. Neat. <laughs> um, Glad they came to visit me. <laughs> Aster, you feel an extreme pressure on your chest and almost like a ripping begin to happen before it stops. Hmm. And you get this impression that 
hunting on a safari is not it would be a nice calm adventure for you mm. and it is a very foreign thought because even if you've been hunting before you've never thought to go to to Africa or especially not sub-saharan Africa and hunt big game but that seems like and you know it would be really nice when you're out on the hunt it's a nice spot of tea and you realize that that hmm. that those are foreign thoughts, but they're very appropriate. Hmm. So as um, the woman begins to chant in Romani, you don't know what it is that she's saying, but it's clearly in Romani. You see the fire flare. And as the fire flares, you notice that there is a half circle on the other side of the fire of uh, women and men just standing there watching um, and you begin to see like almost a stream of energy in like um, yarn thickness coming out of each of them into the fire. And then you see that seam like white wispy string thicken or come out and then start to thicken into multiple woven pieces of yarn and go into Aster's chest, like just connects um, can I mean, would a cult or um, yep, as Cthulhu soon as I'm mythos? Yeah, we'll we'll get there. We are getting there. Uh, next thing I need you both to do is roll. Uh, let's say will times four. Will no wiz uh <laughs> pow <laughs> pow times four pow Jeez, times I'm four. I'm looking for will and I'm like <laughs> pow times four. What's what's your pow? Oh my goodness. It's oh my goodness. One plus one plus two plus one. <laughs> you like no. barely made it. <laughs> my whole box. No, but but I probably shouldn't have, but I did. <laughs> uh, Sixty-seven over fifty-two. What's your pal? Thirteen. <laughs> Isn't that fifty-two? Yeah, that is fifty-two. Thank yeah. you. You made it. Yeah, my pal's only nine. <laughs> um, <laughs> Evelyn, you feel a a string up start at your spine and pull through the front of you and it like vibrates you can physically feel something vibrating and then it stops and you look down and nothing's happening mm -hmm. Blake you feel something similar it's not anywhere near as pain yours is very Evelyn yours is very painful it's like you know when you get like Do a I stitch in your side a gas yeah probably or, okay um, B Blake you feel the same pull but it's more of a pressure than a pain and then you see this wisp of um, of something that yarn thickness going from you into the fire, as well. Um, you'll lose a uh, magic point. Got it. Um, Evelyn, you don't. You you seem to resist whatever's going on because mm -hmm. you don't trust Esther. It's and not even that. It's it's <laughs> no. more like that was sorry that was a joke. Yeah, no, no. It's more <laughs> like um, involuntarily your your spirit felt itself being pulled at and you stopped it without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, Aster, you start to feel a warmth growing in your chest and you feel the those thoughts of England and growing up as a boy um, hunting with your father and going to the prep school and going to the war and leading men. Those kind of shift off into their own part. And the but you start to feel your past. Specifically, you start to see visions of your wife and that your camp and the things that made you the happiest, and they kind of come to the forefront and glow in your mind. And you're, it's almost like a darkness where you can see these two things interposed. And the, the stuff from England is starting to get darker, but it's still there. Um, and as the woman kind of continues to chant, she flips blood onto Aster again. And she's been doing this several times. There should not be any more blood on that dagger. That doesn't make any sense because she keeps mm -hmm. um, the 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 hole in his chest which is starting to reflect the fire as it's getting darker um, starts to sizzle almost like it's heated like a pan would be for water. Um, and it pushes out again and 
it doesn't break through, but it kind of like pulls out this hand kind of just forms out of the skin around it and it's black and it has three claws on it. Um, and it tries to like reach around and, and like, it's going to pull itself out. Um, but then she flips the blood at it again and, and the, the, where it touches the skin, it, um, you know, when you burn paper and it just kind of crinkles away, mm. it's like that. It hits it and it's just like the skin of that, that creature burns away. So quickly. when vampires get exposed to sunlight, Sun, it's sort of like that. Yeah. Um, Aster, a little ashy, Aster. Aster, you feel this idea that it's not about fighting for the good of all. It's about fighting to protect those that can't be protected. And it's not necessarily that was an un, unknown thought to you before, but it's more that this is more like aligning on your spirit and grabbing hold of it. And now it is part and melding into it. It's part of that. So where if you, you probably would have fought for the good of all, like protecting them, it's more of like that knightly noble, like I, I can fight for them. It's my duty to stand in the way, which may not be completely foreign to you, but it's never been this strong. Mm -hmm. um, but that is attached in some way to this information from England. This, this 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 entity from England that you have been feeling in your mind is there's like a, a chain between them and you feel the blood hit your chest you start to feel the blood hit your chest you feel feel the blood hit your chest again and the chain jingles like shakes and then you feel blood hit your face and she she flicks the blood not not she's been flicking at his chest but now she flicks it directly at his face and it just kind of way more blood just splatters across him than has come off the dagger. And as you feel that splatter across, the chain is cut, and the, the what's left of that wraps around your soul and melds into it. Um, so I need all three of you to roll um, sanity. Got it. No. Got it. Okay. If you fail, you're going to roll a d8. If you succeeded as a D four. <laughs> Once a night. Neat. Uh, Brian, you and Evelyn see Aster sit straight up. The black part of him falls off like almost like a thick like plate of obsidian falls off and shatters into tiny pieces the skin underneath is red but like in that healthy like healing red but then it's also like uh, an eighth of an inch deeper in his body than the rest of his skin um and he sits up and you and he coughs and this um creature almost like the a, a, a tiny little like holding your hand creature comes out of him and drops onto the ground and doesn't move and the the woman stabs the dagger into it and the dagger begins to hiss and catches fire. Okay. Aster, you realize that, that, that what was inside you was a corruption to rebirth another, another Wilkerson. There is still one out there and you knew that because you would have known you were a duplicate of him. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And you don't know why you would have known that, but that's it's now that's and everything that was good about him, you have. Everything that was just his history was taken away and the corruption never took hold. Hmm. And as you are sitting up, you're in a lot of pain. You just ache all over, but your direct your chest hurts. You see the creature and you know that that's what the corruption was. Hmm. And it was living inside of you. Hmm. That's a great place for us to, to end it this week for uh, the Nerds Main Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Uh, we will be back next week with a little bit of a time jump as we go farther into the future. We're going to leave this all behind. Evelyn's going to go to court. <laughs> it's going to be very boring. <laughs> Evelyn's lawyer. Right. <laughs> we will talk to you guys all next week.
that will do it for us tonight on the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Remember, you can email us at nerdsdomain at gmail.com or find us over on Facebook and Twitter at facebook.com slash nerdsdomain and twitter.com slash nerdsdomain. You can also check out our site at nerdsdom.com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter while you're there. You can head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. We want to thank Passion Nerdly for our music. Don't forget, you can support us at patreon.com slash nerdsdomain and check out our shirts at TeePublic.